Welcome back to Well This Morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Shazad Khan. Yeah. I happen to be Shaza Hashmi. We are here in the BTV World Islamabad studios, absolutely enjoying the conversation and also the weather. Yeah. But now, before we did go out on a short break, uh, Shazad spoke about something very important, and I totally stand by that. Having a lot of physical inactivity in your life may lead to numerous, numerous health issues. I mean, along with the economic burden that is going to pose to your life and the nation itself, I'm yeah. pretty sure there's, there are health issues. And one of them, one of the major, major reasons for um, infertility in this particular region is definitely physical inactivity. Exactly. How so? I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure that is not the only reason, but it is one of the reasons. Today, in this segment, we are going to be discovering all the other reasons. <laughs> Shazad, you have something to yeah, say? Yeah, I have something. And, you know, because they, over, here, over here, what happens is that in Pakistan, you know, every time you're going to be in conversation with a lady, you know, majority of the time you're going to come across, yaar, main itna ghar ka kaam karti hoon, main bache ne laati hoon, main yeah. sabji dhoti hoon, you know, whatever. Poch, you know, and, and I cook and what not. But imagine that, you know, that you cannot consider all of that a physical activity. Imagine standing in it front of a stove though. and mixing a few masalas is not activity. I, you know, it really needs to engage your core, it needs to engage your glutes, it needs to engage your legs, biceps, triceps and everything. You know, so on, on a very holistic, in a very holistic direction, I would rather say that for all of those women who are actually considering house chores, physical activity, it's not physical activity because we do not live in farmhouses. We actually live in probably, you know, if you're lucky enough in a canal's house, probably that to a portion's rented, three rooms and a lounge. How much work can you do within that house? Imagine, please be honest with yourselves in the first place and whether inactivity kind of contributes to infertility is something which we will be talking we about. We will discover. And that course. obviously comes from men and women both. Yeah. And especially, in fact, if we are talking about infertility, I would rather suggest that all of those men who are out there blaming women should get tested in the first place because 100%. those tests are cheaper and it looks wiser to do so as well. <laughs> rather than blaming your partner, make sure that you get yourself tested. And it's first. only natural. I mean, imagine that there are still people out there who kind of blame their wife for not being able to reproduce. Of course. And even though when they haven't got themselves tested, imagine, you, you're, a st you're a stupid guy if you've done that. So ladies and gentlemen, you know, to talk about this, we're lucky enough that we've actually been joined by somebody who happens to be a robotic surgeon of infertility and IVF surgeon as well. He is Dr. Rezwan Malik. Hello, sir. Assalamu alaikum. Good morning. How good, are you? Good morning. Assalamu alaikum. It's a pleasure and privilege to be here. Thank All you very right, much for joining uh, us, and it's like your energy. I like your energy. It's <laughs> very cool. ecstatic, exuberant, early in the morning. Uh, glad to be here. Well, wow. Dr. Rizwan, mashallah, you are, you are uh, one of a kind surgeons in this particular area, of course. Your experience speaks for itself for more than 30 years, uh, which is why you're here to educate and inform us. So let's begin with what are some of the reasons which might contribute towards infertility in this region? Yeah, I think just said, uh, it's very important to have a healthy lifestyle that really contributes uh, towards PCOS. PCOS is a common problem in, in uh, Asia and Pakistan. And one in three women, right? Right, quite, quite common. And uh, Usme, uh, one of the things is uh, the weight loss, about 20% weight loss treats the PCOS. Okay. And then uh, also um, uh, infertility, about 15% uh, of uh, patients will have infertility. It's defined uh, by not being able to get pregnant uh, in one year. Uh, that's uh, kind of, uh, at that point, uh, expert advice should be seeked. Exactly, so, which is why I, I want to add on to this as well because this is something which I've witnessed uh, myself as well, you know, in my friends' cases where, you know, they got married and everybody wants to enjoy in the first year or the second year of the marriage not to have a baby, responsibilities and whatnot. Do, is, can, do you think that it can be because of the fact that, you know, they waited so long not to get pregnant that eventually it becomes a problem to be uh, pregnant? Not so really. It, I think it's okay to wait. I mean, it's really not... Um, you don't have to have that as a stressful event of your life. It's mm. great to get married. You're, you it's do a it good phase of life. It's uh, one should uh, really at uh, that stage of starting life and all that. So it's okay. Um, but when a couple is ready, I think that's where one. Um, uh, so it's really the, sometimes people blame, like you said, men that they blame a wife, uh, kind of all that. It's, there's no reason to blame. It's really a physical barrier. Yeah. I mean, I give the example to patients of a car that's not running to say, hey, you don't have a gas, you don't have petrol. So there's no reason to g blame or frustrate, get yeah. frustrated. Just put the petrol, the car will start running. Uh, mm. And the, the battery is dead. Change the battery, the car will start running. So these are physical uh, barriers for many reasons, for genetics, the way somebody is born, 
the gen genetics, the environmental factors, our cell phones, our diet, plastics that we use, smog that we have, the food right. we eat. all those, uh, the food we eat, so all those things uh, affect eventually how our body responds and what Even happens. Cell phones? So, it's excuse me. Even cell phones. Cell phones are radiation, so a can lot contribute that to you to not being able to reproduce. It's, it's not that they produce; it's just general environmental <laughs> toxins, right? Okay. So they they end up in what we call oxygen radicals. So oxygen radicals then affect our heart health, our you know reproduction, or the whole system, if you will. So this is where um, I think it's helpful to um, kind of once we are faced with that, it's really just take it as a like any other medical issue, right? You got cough, you got heart attack, you got stroke. You know, you don't blame, you just go to the specialist and listen, hey, I got a stroke, what do I do? Yeah. You got a heart attack, you go to, you know, a heart Fine. specialist and go do that. So I think in this case, the best thing is really to seek the expert advice at the right center. And uh, then, um, like you said, the 40% of uh, infertility is caused by male factor infertility. So yeah. that's what uh, our center has taken the leading role uh, now in Pakistan to treat male fertility. Wow. So that's really where uh, um, we, uh, most about 80% of our patients are issues, we have issues of male fertility. Wow, that's, so uh, I mean, that's, that's a quite, quite a high number as well. And since, right. you know, we've kind of uh, identified where the problem is, you know, in, and we've actually talked in terms of percentages as well. So let's talk about the treatments which are available because, hmm. you know, people over here in Pakistan, Alhamdulillah, Gee. They do not have a feeling of going to a doctor no matter what <laughs> happens. Even if their heart's beating at probably 40 beats per minute, you know, they'll be like, I'm fit, I'm going to go to doctor. Ke you know, so we have this ignorance over here towards our health anyways. So talking about this amazing, uh, you know, surgical intervention that yeah. you brought to Pakistan and, you know, your center as well in the first place. Let's talk about that and how is it beneficial and... You know, is it uh, going to cost less? Is it going to cost much more than whatever usual treatments we go through? Sure. So kind of traditional treatment. I think the uh, what's exciting uh, about American Fertility Center is now it's a uh, part of the fabric uh, of Pakistan. We started in 2014. Time flies by. Uh, it really seems like yesterday that uh, we were putting roots there. We've been in the United States uh, for well over 30 years in practice, but then want to bring that tech, all of that technology to Pakistan. A lot of people say, my God, I'm gonna to go to America, get treatment. I'm yeah. gonna to go to Dubai, get treatment here and there. So the vision was to bring all that to Pakistan and say, listen, everything is available uh, in Pakistan okay. for uh, The same treatment. robotic arms and ev same each and everything uh, right. within that procedure. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's not robotic, it's more so in uh, towards fertility and IVF centers. Okay. So for that, we have all of the facility, genetic analysis, genetic treatment, and IVF at, the, at its best, uh, ICSI, and uh, all the procedures that are available in the world mm. are brought in our center, done here yeah. um, to treat uh, fertility for both men and women, PCOS, endometriosis, uh, pelvic pain, and all those. So that's yeah. the IVF part we have done for years. Part of our uh, uh, kind so of we actually have an animated video of the uh, yes. entire procedure as well. Do you want us to share it with yeah, our audience? Uh, right. No, I think that's the uh, idea is to now, as a part of our initial um, kind of motivation to improve the women's health care, that was, has been our, our uh, kind of, you, you will, if you will, uh, 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 incentive or really our drive of our center has been to improve the health care of the women in Pakistan. That uh, is a big driving force uh, for our center. And as a part of that, we have, what we have introduced is uh, treatment of heavy menstrual bleeding, yeah. the Nova Sure procedure. And so that's what I think the part of the video, animated right, video so, so, we can see. And, uh, so yeah, ladies and gentlemen, you know, see to get a better understanding of it, we are actually going to share an animated video with you guys as well. And it comes uh, with uh, its own voiceover as well. So please <laughs> go ahead and take a look. And uh, once you guys will be back, you know, we'll actually ask Dr. Saab about these other uh, surgical interventions where we're talking about robotic arms as well because I've gone through a surgery which actually involved a robotic arm we call it keyhole surgery we'll come back to it let's do that your doctor slightly opens your cervix the opening to the uterus inserts a slender wand and extends a triangular mesh device into the uterus the mesh expands fitting to the size and shape of your uterus Precisely measured radio frequency energy is delivered through the mesh for about 90 seconds. The mesh device is pulled back into the wand and both are removed from the uterus. Right. 
How is it? No, it's all yeah. right. Well, so, so we were actually having an argument, ladies and gentlemen, while you were watching this video. Yeah, please go ahead. All right. So, yes, it was really informative. I'm really happy that this uh, technique is now in Pakistan. But I think I'm going to ask a lot of questions on behalf of every woman out there. Sure. Um, Doctor, sir, please explain to us how must it be so harmful to our health if we have heavy bleeding during menstrual cycle? Right. So we, we switched gears a bit, right? I had different hats, right? First, we had a hat on treating infertility and bringing babies in the world, right? Yeah. So that yeah. was a more first hat we were in. Second, now we moved, uh, shifted gear um, towards improving the women's health care and citizen providing uh, the women of Pakistan with the latest treatment options available out there in Europe or the United States. So as women complete their childbearing and in their late 30s, uh, 30, 35, uh, 40, mid 40s, they, their egg production is compromised. Okay. With that irregular egg production, they have heavy menstrual bleeding and so, to a point that a number of things happen. That heavy bleeding leads to quality of life issues, uh, anemia, exhaustion, fatigue, uh, fatigue, and you know, cancers are there. So what we do is we look for cancer. If it's cancer, obviously we do a cancer surgery. Okay. We, but if somebody does not have cancer, they're done with childbearing, they've had you know, two children or three, whatever the desired family is. She is somebody who's 35 years of age, says, I'm done with my children, childbearing, but I'm just bleeding every day. I can't go to work, I can't do bicycling, I can't go, I just cannot have a meaningful life. A normal life, life yeah. Oh, what I want to so do. So would you bring early menopause then? Right, no, not so. That's a great question. So what we do is, um, in that case, somebody's having the, all this bleeding, they un traditionally just would go and have a hysterectomy, right? It's a very morbid procedure, it's a big procedure, you get a big cut, your recovery has multiple complications, and, and really not what women want uh, or, or they deserve. So that's where this procedure was invented about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Over two million procedures have been performed in the United States, and now over there it's a standard of care, if you will, that uh, when a woman comes in, you do this procedure first before offering hysterectomy. All right. So what we do is we burn the lining of the uterus that has menstrual bleeding every month. So uh, out of that 90%, the data shows of women will be content and very happy, say, my God, I'm so happy I had the procedure done, where I have no bleeding at all or very minimal spotting. Yeah. So that's one way to get rid of the menstrual cycle. So great question, menopause. So menopause, is when the ovaries stop working, the hormones are not produced. So that's the beauty of this procedure is it's done in about 90 seconds. So literally about a minute and a half. Oh wow. Yeah. And it's just like a laser thing you do. It is, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it is 90 second procedure. It stops your menstrual cycles for life and uh, you don't have any changes in hormones. All your hormones are produced by your ovaries as uh, regular and normal hormones. Brilliant. So obviously you won't be reproducing then, right? No, that's one so of the things. You're giving up on that. So you really need to make your mind in the first place if you're going for this treatment, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, because, you know, over here in Pakistan, sir, we would like extra ingredients always. You know, we, we're more <laughs> into it. You know, we're a smaller country. We have a population of 220 million. You know, people are having babies at the age of 55 and 60, which we are welcoming as well. So I don't know. Everybody who's out there, ladies and gentlemen, please Miracles make your mind happen. first of all <laughs> that, okay, you know, we've had enough babies. And you know we should go for this treatment in the first right. place. Right, I think it's uh, more than a compromise between the two. They're having babies versus saying, okay, you know, uh, more for the woman really it becomes a decision at when they're bleeding that much yeah, to yeah. say, let's say it becomes a new sense, a quality of life issue. It becomes medical problem and quality of life. So they really at that point they decide that okay, instead of having a hysterectomy, a more modern procedure, this is something to do uh, before considering hysterectomy. Wonderful okay. answer. We are glad that you kind of uh, took out time and you were here on the show to speak about this amazing medical intervention where you'll be saving a lot of lives. You'll be saving the livelihood of women as well. So I believe that you're doing a wonderful job and we kind of want people to kind of get in touch with you if, God forbid, you know, they're going through such problems as well. And to do so, ladies and gentlemen, all you have to do is write to us on our Facebook page, which is with the name of? Yes, Well This Morning. On Twitter? <laughs> well This Morning without a G. On Daily Motion and GTV. It is definitely Well This Morning. And do you want to say anything towards the end? Of course. So the repeat of this, so you may be able to catch at uh, five, 5 past midnight, midnight, but I think it is very pertinent to sort of close the segment with us saying that 
this was us or our effort, our show's or producer's effort, to bring to you the options that are available. Yep. So like Dr. Sub mentioned, a lot of women might be there, you know, uncomfortable with the situation of their menstrual cycle. So if you are really looking for an option to sort of treat that, these are the pros uh, possible prospects you might be finding in Islamabad. But make sure to do your research before you do anything. Exactly. Well, so the next time we'll make sure to bring you something even more informative. Till then, take care. Good morning. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir.